Right, recently I broke my soldering station and I was in the market for a backup soldering iron. I'm currently using a, a very old Maplin soldering iron, which is okay um, as a backup, but it takes a long time to warm up and it's got a quite a thick lead on it. And uh, yeah, I just wanted something um, small, lightweight and decent. And I stumbled across these. And I'm not being sponsored by this uh, company at all to show you this, but this is the Pine Sill BB2. Uh, some of you may have seen different variants of this online before. This is the new version. I'll tell you how light this thing is. I mean, in the box you get uh, a little instruction book. It's a USB-C powered iron. And uh, it has a, a display on it. It's a temperature adjustable. And uh, I think this shipped for $30. Um, now it's drop shipped. I think the company appears to be in uh, Canada. But this was actually drop shipped from China. Um, but I'll put a link in the description to the website where you can get these then they're really nicely made It just comes with a standard conical tip there and focus um, Which is about the perfect size for the stuff that I do and I do know a lot of people uh, a lot of technicians actually use this type of pencil for their day-to-day -day soldering pencil for their day-to-day -day work and it has the um, The little foam grip at the top here to stop it getting too hot and it, it can run off an external supply of 12 to 24 volts, uh, 18 to 88 watts. And it has a little on-screen menu there. Now there are reviews of this iron online, but this is the very latest version of this. And the way that you, you can obviously tell from a first glance is this green sleeve that's over the end of the iron there. And the fact that it's a BB2. Now on, the, on Amazon, this was they wanted silly money for this. So uh, honestly, go on the website, go on the uh, Pintzer website. Uh, set up an account there and just order it from them. Um, so let's uh, let's get some power into it and see what it what it can do. Now it is uh, super useful for the iron to be powered off USB-C, but you'll need a a quick charge type USB charger that can provide the kind of power for for the maximum power output the iron needs. Now I would suggest picking up a, a two and a half mil plug, such as these cheap ones on Amazon, and just wiring up your own lead. Now I've done that with mine and it makes a, such a massive difference. There's currently a review of this uh, iron by SDG online where he, slate, where he sort of slates it a little bit for not warming up quick enough, for not being powerful enough. But the guy's running it off of USB-C. Run it off of uh, the jack plug. See the jack plug in the back there? And you'll see just how quickly this thing warms up. Right, if you go on the Pine Sill website, um, you'll see there's lots of bigger tips than this conical tip that you can order. And um, you can either order them with the iron or just order them afterwards. It doesn't take that long for them to come. So we've got the um, the the barrel here. Simply pop it in the end. I'm using just a standard piece of CB power cable because this thing's going to draw about 3.3 amps in bursts, and this is more than capable of taking that kind of power. Now you could obviously use some silicon twin core if you've got that. Whatever you've got lying around that's suitable. Um, so there's a display on here uh, on the front. It's quite small. I don't know if my camera's making it wobble, but it doesn't do that in uh, in reality. Of course, it uh, it's just the frame rate of the camera, and it shows that the iron is plugged in. It shows it's running off of 24 volts there to the side. There is number a number of settings you can go go through the brightness of the display, the power settings, the soldering settings, the sleep mode. This iron will go to sleep when you put it on the stand, which I'll come to in a minute. Um, which is great and it heats up and uh, it heats up very very quickly on 24 volts There's tons of advanced settings to do with PID tuning stuff that you, most of us probably aren't going to be interested in We're not going to be soldering uh, welding with this as some people seem to want to do with soldering irons um, This is I'm using this purely for um, For soldering just the day-to-day -day stuff. So if you go to the thing we clicked on temperature and look how quickly that has warmed up and I've got a Maplin sun. This is set at 450 degrees. So that was the last setting I had it set to. And I can literally feel how warm that's got. Um, obviously at, at that kind of temperature it will have no problem. These conical tips, um, uh, obviously that there are hotter tips. You'll notice how short the tip length is, which is some of you might appreciate when you're doing a bit of soldering. So let's get something to quickly go and, and just check the soldering with. And the iron is ticking over at... It's, we've got some Z's coming up on the screen of the iron which shows that it's asleep and it's cooling down So I'm just literally lifting it out of the holder and straight away. It's back up to for, to, to temperature And then we'll just blast some solder on here and just see how this Goes and you'll see that 
it's made, it's flowing around nicely with that diode's moving around and then it's putting plenty of copper on the board and if we move the diode out of the way we can show you the it's just pooling lovely on this board look like a river I mean and there's a fair bit of uh, thermal mass involved in doing this I mean I have got some copper boards somewhere but you can see from this look it's just a, a nice river of, of of solder on there and it's pulling at peaks three amps at 24 volts so you can see it's definitely doing the power unlike you know some reviewers have, have got this iron and have just put out reviews going it's not powerful enough well they're not running it with enough power you can't complain something isn't powerful enough and then not give it the power it needs now i think for most of us will agree that, that is more power than you actually need the the speed that it actually it actually picks up at when you when it cools down is actually amazing absolutely brilliant so i think you'll agree for most of us that is going to be enough now um a really hot iron like this what are you going to do with it where are you going to put it, it doesn't come with a stand uh so i might be able to help you out there and there we go i will leave the uh, stl files in the description for if you want to make yourself a nice little stand um i'll show you just another thing the iron does if you um tilt the iron the opposite way it will actually flip the display to suit so it'll automatically see it flip back it's just flip back there it'll automatically orient the display to suit you which is fantastic but yes yeah, so what was i showing you i was showing you this you need somewhere to put the iron don't you when it's really really hot now i have got old soldering stands that are, that are still lovely i've got the old weller soldering stand which such as this but and I could use this, I could slot the iron in there obviously, but it's quite a bulky, heavy, big thing. And this iron is nice and small and with a short tip and it's the sort of thing that I don't solder at 24 hours a day. So it's easy to just stash this away somewhere in the drawer or, or on the side. Now what I've done, I've designed this um, stand in Design Spark to take a standard size sponge. Um, now I've got aluminium aluminium post four mil aluminium tube, tube in here just because I had it in the drawer. Now you could actually just use cheap four mil threaded rod, and that would also give the the device some weight because I haven't printed this particularly uh, with a great infill, so it's it, it does skirt around a little bit, but it's fine. Um, so you could you could use four mil threaded rod for these sections or aluminium tube in. I put some little feet on the bottom of it to stop it from shifting about. Uh, an M4 by 20 bolt goes through the hinge bit there and like I say the nice thing about the design is when you finish with it you can literally fold that flat that sits absolutely flush on the on the sponge and you just pop that away in the drawer I've made the tray on it so um, that what it is it's a friction fit when you come up here there's little nubs inside there which grip onto the thing so you can angle it just about where you want and see the iron has actually uh, has actually warmed up it thinks i want to do business um what i did around the tip of this you don't have to do this but i just had some old ptfe tubing from the 3d printer i just glued some of that around the edge just in case i catch the end of this with the tip i haven't done yet but i just did it because i had it lying around it was old tubing uh, you don't have to do that of course because if you melt one of these you can just simply print another one can't you so I thought you might like to see that. I'll leave the um, the STL files in there. You can make yourself one of these. Uh, it took about uh, three hours across the three printers to do it. Didn't take too long. Really easy to make. Very very nice little unit. Um, and let me see if I can show you the uh, the iron cooling down. Now also yes, sorry I meant to mention. Let's let's unplug the iron just for a second. With this iron, it obviously I haven't some of the longer tips. Um, I've, I, I'm probably not going to use anything other than the conical tip on this iron and I've left a, I didn't want it to be too long, I want it to be fairly compact but what you can do if you do have longer tips um, all you simply do is obviously just adjust the length of your bars that you require. I didn't require anything more than this because I'm only ever really in this iron going to run these small tips. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that if you do make one of these you can just lengthen these bars and then you can make it as long as you like can't you. So. Uh, what were we going to show you? Oh yes, the, and also yes, the iron doesn't go any further than that. If you look down the slot of the uh, of it, I've put little recessed catches in there to catch the actual tip of the iron like that. So anyway, this wasn't really a review about my stand, but I thought I'd show it you. Um, so I just want to wrap this video up really, just to say what a great little iron this thing is. Don't believe some of the reviews you might have seen online from people with vested interests in other products. Um, again, we'll pop the the power back into it and uh, show you again the, the speed of uh, 
I mean, people that say that's slow, well, that's up to, up to temperature straight away. And when you're not actually using it, like I say, it goes into this sleep mode. And you can change all these settings. There's a ton of settings, which I don't think you'll need to change. Uh, but what a fantastic little unit. Most of the time, I just keep this on 375 to 400 for the stuff that I do. And that's more than enough. So I'll leave a link to the Pine Seal website where you can grab one of these for £30. Uh, they drop ship them from China, as I've already said. And I think for the money, really, it's a fantastic little iron. It really, really is. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that. It's something different from my normal videos. Uh, but I thought I'd pop this out there in case you was in the market for one. And uh, I, I, I don't really think you can go far wrong with one of these, to be honest. Brilliant. Okay, if you have been, thank you ever so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Take care.